Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Carl's Conversations. I know it's been a little bit since I've been back with you in this vein, but don't worry. We got some things coming up uh, for the end of this year, 2022, and we'll definitely have some interesting things coming up for you on Carl's Conversations for the year of 2023. As you can see, I have Managing Director Timothy L. Armstrong from Omnicrew. This is going to be a very interesting discussion. Uh, Timothy has an international recruiting firm which specializes in recruiting nurses. And if you didn't know about the nursing shortage in the USA, I'm sure after COVID, and I don't know if I can say after COVID, we're still in COVID, but we're not quite in this COVID shutdown. But let me tell you, COVID ran havoc on our nursing industry. And so uh, he has uh, uh, developed something with some others uh, that can fill the gap of nursing. So what I don't want you to do, if you're in our live audience right now, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you are, if you know nurses or nursing managers, uh, those people who may be looking for nurses, anybody who you think would benefit from this conversation, I want you to go ahead and start to contact them, tag them, let them in on this broadcast. And I'm going to even put the um, the YouTube link uh, in the chat so that you can share this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do it right now as I'm talking to you. Here is the YouTube link uh, for this chat. And you can share that with anybody who wants to come and join us. And right now we are live on YouTube uh, and on Facebook and on Twitter. On YouTube and on Facebook, you can find us at Carl's Conversations. And on Twitter, you can go to my personal Twitter account, Carl Armstrong, and you'll see that there. All right. So we welcome in everybody who is anybody, even those of you who are catching this on the replay, whether it's an hour later, a day later, a week later. Hey, listen, make sure you get this into the presence of someone who needs nurses. Welcome, Managing Director Timothy Armstrong. God bless you, sir. <laughs> well, bless you. And thank you so much for having me. <clears throat> I have to tell your audience that I have been chasing Carl for maybe two or three months. Is I got to get on, I got to get on, I got to get on, because I hear that you are a valuable audience that is just engaging, and he speaks very highly of you. So, man, I count it all joy. I am thrilled. It is a pleasure and honor to uh, be on Carl's Conversations today. All right. I want to start, if you don't mind, please tell us uh, what Omnicrew is, and I want you to take your time because some people may not really understand what is it and what are you doing with it? Right. At the end of the day, it's real simple. We're all recruiters, right? <clears throat> we are a group of recruiters that formed while we were serving overseas. We, we, we got ourselves together and decided that we wanted to go into business our, uh, for ourselves. And we figured out that there was a need or a niche market uh, in the United States. You know, we understood what the H-1B problem is. And, you know, I got some good news about that a little later on. Um, and we, we realized that we could really, really do what we love and serve a tremendous need uh, in the United States by recruiting nurses from overseas to mitigate the loss of nurses here in the United States. You know, it's projected by 2030 that we're going to have a million nurse shortage. And it, it, give or take, depending on the sources that you look at, here in the United States. And so um, our goal is just to find great nurses. We uh, and, and we, we've been working very hard over the last 18 months building an infrastructure uh, of a company. And so uh, we, we, we've, we formulated our company and began operations and we've been able to get a pipeline of over 200 nurses. And we've been able to vet and filter, I think about 35, I, I need to check the count again, that we've all personally looked at, vetted and made sure that they were qualified to come uh, work in the United States. And so um, it's we, we recruit nurses, right? Um, eventually, we'll start recruiting technicians and um, and other medical professionals. But right now, we're focused on nurses because that's where the need is. Let me ask you, how did you even, uh, you know, there's always a story about how a company started. What made you understand, hey, this is a need I can feel and I think this will work? Right. Uh, well, it took research. Um, one thing I didn't want to do, Carl, was uh, just jump out there and and just open up a recruiting firm 
in the industry that I was in. You know, I was a government contractor when I first got the idea, and then I went moved to oil and gas when we start putting things together. But you know, these these markets rise and fall. The real need, the, the tremendous need, is nurses in the United States. And you know, we have we have um, we have so many. Uh, opportunities uh, that you, you just can't even t- turn your back on. I mean, th- th- we have competitors that are coming to us and we're now sharing information with our competitors because there's so much room for us in the marketplace. And so we we realized that there was a need. We realized that there was an immigration problem. We realized that uh, it wasn't easy. <laughs> Boy, it is not easy. But uh, But we've been able to really, really get our arms around uh, understanding the immigration issue, understanding some of the problems that our hospitals are having. And um, we've we've had a, a serious illness with one of our loved ones here recently. And I've been able to engage with a lot of nurses in the markets that we're targeting. And th- the need is real and it's not going away. And uh, we're here to, to solve that need. I hope I answered your question. I got distracted a little bit, but I hope I answered your question. You absolutely did. And uh, I'm dealing with some comments that are com- that are coming in. This is great because I really want people to understand what it is you do. So for those uh, nursing managers, uh, those who are, are in uh, positions uh, to hire and recruit nurses, because we're looking at recruiters in the industry, we're looking at right. nursing managers. What is it that you present that says, hey, let me help you with your staffing issue? Well, the, the, the first thing is that, and this is exciting. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, the first thing is that you know, we've been in this business for a long time. I mean, we've been recruiting, me and the, our, our partners, we've been recruiting, I think our combined years of experience is about 70, 80 years of experience. And we've got about 30, 40 years of international experience. Now, we've lived and worked in all the countries that we're targeting, right? So, so um, we don't come to this as novices. We come to the, the we're, we're hardcore professional recruiters. Um, we've lived and worked in India. We've recruited out of India. We've lived and worked in the Philippines. We recruited out of the Philippines. We've lived and worked in, in other parts of the world where we're starting to get, get nurses from. And so um, I think when you look at us versus our competition, I mean, the, 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 we're a team of expats and immigrants, right? You know, um, 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 Everyone on the team has lived an immigrant life and have an immigrant story and have an immigrant experience. And we, we're able to relate to our nurses and we're able to speak from experience with our hospitals. I was in one of our hospitals here locally the other day and one of the nurse managers was complaining that he couldn't get one of his nurses out of the Philippines and they had been waiting for, for 18 months. And I'm thinking, why? Because the H-1B waiting list is, is non-existent for the Philippines post-COVID, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're in a different world now now that we're, we're post-COVID. And our hospitals locally here that we're targeting are teaching hospitals. So they have an H-1B waiver. And so, you know, to the hospitals out there, if you're having trouble getting your your nurses and other medical professionals out of their home countries, uh, just give us a call. We'd like to sit down and talk with you and we'd like to understand your situation and see if we can help. Because I think that we have a pool of nurses that are ready to go. They're ready to deploy. But also, I think uh, with, with our legal team and with our current team of expats and immigrants, we, we can really, really address your problem. I, you know, I understand my competitors. I, I know who who's out there. But one thing about our team is that we have built up a network of connections and relationships in our target countries, and we can physically land, get on an airplane, land in the country, and call several of our vendors and third-party suppliers and be able to get the resources needed to um, to supply our hospitals. I've even I've invited one of our vendors. I told one of our vendors, hey, li- give me your HR folks. I get them on the airplane. I take them over with me. We'll go- you don't have to commit to anything, but just go on a recruiting trip with me and watch how we interview in mass and how we can hire in bulk for, to, to, to satisfy your, your nursing needs. I'm going to do a little housekeeping and we'll come back to that. I want to let the audience know if you have a comment or a question, please feel free to add that uh, because you may have a, a, a question for uh, Director Tim that he can answer right here for you, especially if you are an employer or in a position to recruit or hire uh, these nurses that he's talking about. We definitely want you to be able to actively engage 
And if you have a question, please make sure you get it. Now, Tim, I know some things about you that the audience may not know. Uh, when it comes to the expertise of visas, the audience does not know that you have actually been an immigrant in several countries. And because of your international recruiting experience, you've had offices in many countries around the world. Therefore, you understand uh, this immigration progress process, which is vital to getting these nurses from where they are to these U.S. assignments. Could you explain to the audience some of the places where you have been an immigrant, some of the places where you've had to set up offices throughout the world? Yeah, currently I'm a resident in the Philippines. <laughs> I'm sitting in Norfolk, Virginia today, but I'm a resident of the Philippines. My, my wife, who's a Philippine national, she's a resident of the United States. And we both have gone through each country's uh, immigration experiences. But um, I've immigrated to, uh, to Kuwait, uh, to Saudi Arabia, uh, to, to Bahrain, to the United Arab Emirates, and of course, the Philippines. But I've had offices all throughout the GCC in Southeast Asia. I mean, I've set, um, I've had offices in um, in Kuala Lumpur, in Singapore, uh, Ho Chi Minh City, uh, o o Oman, uh, Kazakhstan, <laughs> and, and the like. I mean, it's too too many to even name. But it, it, and I say that to say this: that we come to this table of business of recruiting, understanding the landscape. Now I'm looking at some of my competitors and I'm not throwing shades on any of my competitors, but we just don't hire people in an offshore office to do recruiting that's never been to the United States. We don't hire people here in the United States to do recruiting offshore that's never been in the countries that we're targeting. And so we have local nationals in most of our countries that we're recruiting from. Um, and we have folks who have lived the expat life in those countries. And so we come with a very personal experience. And, and, and this has been over the last 15 years. We come with a very personal experience in these countries. And we're very proud of our multinational uh, team. Um, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I can't wait to sit down with some of our uh, clients and just talk about the brilliance and the, the diversity of our team. Uh, there's a couple of our team members and future team members that are in the chat right now. Um, uh, one, one of our uh, future team members is from, uh, from Syria. She's waiting for us to get the Saudi office open. <laughs> we have one of our uh, uh, team members sitting in Kuwait from the Philippines that's in the audience right now. So I'm so glad that they've joined us here, but that's just a bit of the diversity. So, I tell people we're, we're not a mom and pop shop, but yeah, we are a mom and pop shop. <laughs> <laughs> but but we we come with tons of international experience. And that nurse manager that I spoke to at the hospital a few weeks ago, you know, I just so I told him I says you need to give me a call because I don't think your supplier is really being honest with you and being truthful because it shouldn't take that long to get your nurse out of that country. Right, and that was the truth. So here's, here's what I want you to do, if you don't mind. Take a moment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to explain to the audience the diversity of your staff, uh, because, hey, they just may not know, right? Right. The diversity of your staff uh, and uh, how that helps you guys to understand uh, how to recruit in these different regions of the world. And I also want, them, want you to give them a glimpse of your first quarter 2023 travel calendar uh, in your recruiting, <laughs> because all this helps them to understand what you're doing, if you don't mind. Right, right. Okay, so let's talk about diversity, right? Uh, I met one of our potential clients uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, her biggest question was, you know, tell me about diversity. And I said, well, boy, can I tell you about diversity? Well, I want to start with our nurses. So when we started on our journey, we were targeting India and the Philippines. And uh, through our very sharp and apt um, um, uh, team member who is in charge of our social media, We've been able to get candidates from Eswatini, which is formerly Swaziland, from Ghana, uh, and and from Iran of all places. I mean, I, did, I had no idea we could do that. And through 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 the course of lots of conversations, there are ways to get Iranian nurses to the United States. Boy, I, that that's you know we're still working on that. That's difficult, but that's just the diversity of the team members that we're getting. Um, uh, 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 these nurses that we're getting from from around the world. So our Indian Filipino nurses are not only are they coming from those countries, but they're raising their hands from other countries um, <clears throat> like the Seychelles and Abu Dhabi and Dubai and Oman and, and the rest of the GCC, even Saudi Arabia. So we're having um, uh, those 
nationals from those countries raising their hands and say, hey, we want to participate with Team Omni Group. But <clears throat> on our team, our leaders, the diversity of our leaders is that there are three of us uh, who are leading. Uh, I serve as a managing director, Mr. Mulasab Sheikh. Uh, he's our director of Asia. Uh, he's an uh, Indian national. Um, he's um, he's based um, in, in the Middle East right now. Uh, Mr. Brian Waldrop, um, he is um, uh, based in Houston, Texas. He and I, we, 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 we met in Kuwait and, um, and, 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 and have been friends ever, ever since. Now, um, our senior recruiter is sitting in the Philippines, our um, web specialist sitting in the Philippines, our, um, our uh, business executive, uh, she is sitting in, in Kuwait. And we have a host of others that are standing at the ready to, uh, to come join us as soon as we get to, uh, to our revenue stage. We are a startup, you know, we are pre-revenue startup, but we've built the infrastructure to start operations today. And, you know, when I look at my travel schedule for uh, for the first quarter of next year, because we do have a couple of interested uh, clients who raise their hands and say, hey, we need 30 nurses um, within the first quarter of next year. And so we're able to fulfill that need with our local inventory of nurses, but then we have to backfill. And so we've already set up through our network of relationships. Uh, we have to get out to uh, Eswatini in Ghana, uh, in Africa, and we, we're still trying to decide if we're going to get to Nigeria while we're on the continent. Uh, but we'll be in uh, India, in the Philippines, and hopefully, hopefully, maybe um, we'll be able to expand that list uh, as we continue to think about where we're going to get the best nurses, how do we hire in bulk, and how do we get that pipeline refilled once we supply the needs of our uh, potential client right now? Wow. You've probably named some places that some people have not heard of. <laughs> so how do you know where the hot spots are? Uh, in other words, the places you can go to where you have nurses who are already uh, ready to go or that you can put in a process uh, that helps them to be ready so that you can have uh, uh, those ready to staff, when you meet these nursing managers, these recruiters who say, listen, I need 25 nurses before the second quarter of 2023. How do you put yourself in position to fill those needs? Well, that's a trade secret. I can't tell you everything. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> But we, we, we do some old fashioned things. We, we advertise in local newspapers. Um, uh, we hire partners uh, in the local countries that will do a lot of the legwork for us with advertising. So we don't have to really run to ads ourselves, but we'll advertise in uh, newspaper, radio and whatever mediums, including job boards uh, that we can, including um, social media. Um, now, what we do is we give the criteria that local partner cast a wide net, gives us a broad list. We filter down that list with an initial, uh, for, for initial interviews. Uh, our, our recruiting partners, uh, our, our, our recruiting team, team members with Omnicrew interviews those candidates to make sure that they've met the minimum criteria and, and according to our job order that we give them. And then there's a final interview with me and, um, and our um, uh, director of Asia. Now, we also have a nurse uh, on staff that, that's able to uh, interview when we're needed. And so whenever we need to ask very technical questions, we use a, a nurse to, uh, to filter questions uh, to, to candidates. And I'm, you know, I, I think I got maybe one credit hour of nursing <laughs> <laughs> from all of the technical questions that I've learned over time through, through, the, uh, through the nurse interviews. Now, I know that when we deal with um, foreign nurses that come to uh, America to work, I know that there are a couple of exams uh, that they have to pass. And I want to make sure that the audience that you're speaking to uh, has assurance that uh, when they deal with you, they're going to have nurses who are qualified and ready to go. Can you speak to that? Sure. First of all, all of our nurses are BSNs. Right. Uh, we do not take the diploma nurses, although, you know, that is the, the requirement here in the United States. All of our nurses are, are, are BSNs uh, and they are licensed and certified not only in their home country, but the countries they're working in, because we are we're talking to some expat nurses as well. Now, the NCLEX, um, which is uh, the National Nurses Exam for, for, for nurses here in, in the United States, is required for the nurses to come here to the United States and work as a nurse. 
right? And so we're requiring those uh, candidates to take that exam in their home country, as well as with one of the many English language tests that are, um, that are approved by the Department of State. And so we're requiring those two examinations for those nurses to come over. Now, what we've been finding along the way is that some countries will not have a testing center for, 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 for that particular exam. We're, we're trying to find ways to, to get our, our nurses tested before they come, but we, we've, we've decided through our sponsorship as we sponsor nurses, um, through our sponsorship, that we will uh, waive the NCLEX requirement, allow the nurse to come and work in a non-clinical role in the United States until they pass their nursing exam here, and then they go off to, to be a nurse. And so there's still opportunities for those BSNs. I mean, we, 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 have, a, we have one of our nurses is a PhD, and, and we, we, have a, a, uh, we have a handful of uh, master's degree nurses. And so all of our nurses are, are, are very, very uniquely qualified, and we spend a lot of time making sure that they understand, A, their craft. Of course, I'm, I'm not a nurse. I, I can't technically qualify them. Um, um, but we make sure that they're credentialed, they're practicing, and they, they understand where they're getting into because the, the United States, you know, arguably has uh, the best uh, med medicine uh, and medical practitioners in the world. I, I, I would argue that. But... Um, but we want to make sure that these nurses are able to come and adapt, get adjusted, and have a wonderful career. There are a lot of things that we're putting in place to make sure that they're well adjusted. I'm glad that you said that. That's a great segue uh, uh, into my next question. And I think Tanya Creekmore might have beat me to it. Uh, I'm sure some of the employers may be concerned about the cultural orientation. Do you have something in place that will help with that? Yeah, um, we we've designed a pre-departure orientation for our nurses. Um, it's 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 five days long. I'm trying to cut it down to three, <laughs> but but it's a pre-departure orientation, and that is all of us expats on our team. We all ask one question: What did you want to know before you before you um, uh, immigrated to your first country? What did you need to know? What should you have known? You know, I had a great orientation when I came to uh, came to Kuwait for the first time. It's my first time living overseas. And so we wanted to replicate something like that. And so our pre-departure pre orientation for our nurses is to uh, bring um, all of our nurses in each country to their to their national capital or a major city center, uh, second them into a hotel and just go through systematically what it's like to live in the United States. What are some of the customs and cultures? What are your rights? Uh, we, we spend a day talking about American history, American laws, uh, uh, so that they understand, you know, that even as an immigrant, as a, as a non-American immigrant, you get, you get the same rights and privileges under the Constitution. You're protected under the, under, under the law of, of the United States. And so we want to make sure that they understand because, you know, and, and, and we're noticing that there are a lot of differences in expectations of our nurses because they've never worked in the United States. And, you know, some of the expectations are they, they're expecting housing and transportation because these are some things that other employees do in other countries. And, and we tell them, yeah, you're, you're in the United States. We're not going to take your passport and you can live anywhere you want to. And th th believe it or not, that's, that's, that's a difference. And, and that's something that we are sharing with, with our nurses. So, to answer Ms. Creekmore's uh, question, we uh, we design a pre-departure orientation to make sure that that they understand um, what it's like to live and work in the United States, and we give them a post-arrival orientation because they're going to need to understand, you know, okay, now that you told me how to bank, where do I bank? Where, where do I buy groceries? And hopefully, through a a network that we're building, and this is this is our pre-build here. Hopefully through a network that we're building, we're hopefully connecting these nurses with other um, families of their nationalities. And, and Virginia is a great place to, to, to get these families connected because we're a very diverse state. And um, get these nurses plugged into the right communities, to the right faith groups, so that they're well acclimated, hear the languages of home, smell the foods and, 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 and those types of things of home so that they, they're well acclimated. Well, I tell you what, 
when it comes to diversity, I'm here in the Northern Virginia region. And you're talking about uh, a, a mix of nations and cultures and languages and dialects. Uh, I would feel safe to say uh, those nurses that you're recruiting from many regions uh, of the world would find a pocket uh, of their own culture, uh, of their own people, which will make it probably a little easier for them to yeah. get started. Of course, we want them to expand. But if you do nursing, you're going to meet people. Yeah. <laughs> that we, is a we, people we, job. We purposely targeted Northern Virginia. Um, uh, we really think that we could have great cultural fits of our nurses in Northern Virginia because it is richly diverse. And even here in Southeast Virginia, I am I am finding, uh, you know, a, I was walking down the street and I uh, offered to take some tourist photos. And, you know, they said, uh, I said, where are you from? They said, we're from Ghana. I said, oh, really? I'm recruiting nurses from Ghana. Yeah, here, take my business card. I have someone give me a call. And so, and, and these are nurses in, in, in this area from, from, from Ghana. So it was just by, by luck that I met them, but it just affirms what we already know. And that is Norfolk, which is our home base and, and target location, that Norfolk is uh, extremely diverse as well. We're getting plugged into the, to the Philippine community here as well. And so um, we'll have to find a network of uh, families and community outreach for, for our Indian nationals as well. So we, I, have, I have zero concerns about our nurses becoming acclimated um, into the areas that we recruit to. Wonderful. This is what I want to do. I know that there are a few of you who are connected with Omnicruit in the audience. If you will, while I'm interviewing your managing director, I want you to put into the chat his uh, Omnicrew email address. And if you are one of the point of contacts, I want you to put that into the chat also so that I can uh, get that on the screen so that people will know how to directly contact. I have some of the Omnicrew information here, the PO box, if you need to mail something to them. Uh, there is also a, a US number. Uh, I didn't put the Houston stuff up because I know you're mainly uh, in, in the Norfolk right. area. Uh, but if they get in contact with you, I know you can direct them. So if somebody from the audience can uh, can give me that information in the chat, I would appreciate it, and I'll post it so they will know how to contact uh, Director Tim. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank Let you me so ask much. you, uh, what are you gaining and learning when you do have an audience with your uh, nursing managers, uh, with your healthcare recruiters, when you are able to get an audience with them, with them what are you learning about their needs uh, and, and about how uh, exactly you can help them? Yeah, my, my biggest question or my biggest concern, my biggest curiosity is what are your pain points? You know, um, and, and I hear I'm hearing that the pain points are the time and the process. And so we, we have uh, engaged with a, a local attorney. Uh, here in the Hampton Roads area, a local immigration attorney that has a heart and passion for nurses and has um, uh, managed immigration process for nurses. And it was just, again, by, by luck that, that we met him. But uh, we're, we're learning from, from our uh, potential clients that, you know, their, uh, their, their staff are exacerbated. Uh, they're overworked. And, and even, even in some of my personal experience here in some of the local hospitals recently, the nurses are phenomenal. Hats off to the nurses in Hampton Roads and all across our country, because I'm, I'm watching firsthand, you know, um, uh, at the bedside of, of my loved one, I'm watching firsthand the work and the dedication that these nurses are, are, are going through. And so, you know, I hear you. We hear you. And we don't want you to have to suffer when we have this opportunity for nurses here. And, and again, we can sit down with you and understand what your needs are. And we're, we, they're, they're sharing with us their clinical needs and the medical specialties. We're, we're learning what they actually need. And so I, give us an opportunity to sit down with you and just share, first of all, our experience we can share with you our library of, of nurse profiles who, who some may be, may be actually watching and listening right now. We, um, we share with your profiles and then we can talk through a strategy 
partnering with your human resources team and your recruiting team and your legal team. We can partner with those folks to make sure that we're finding A, the best nurses that are going to be best suited for your particular hospital or your particular location, and then put together a strategy where we can actually get them over here. The, 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 the H-1B rules have, have changed a bit since, since in, in a post-COVID environment because a lot of those waiting lists that used to be so long have been wiped out. Um, the, the West African uh, lines are, are being reduced tremendously. The uh, As of September, I think the, the line for Philippine nationals have been reduced to just a few weeks. And so those H-1B woes that we've grown accustomed to and have known over the last few years as we try to recruit our professionals are starting to disappear. Nurses have a special category. Teaching hospitals have a special category. So there's opportunity. The, the, tremendous opportunity and let's not miss the opportunity to get our nurses here in, in the United States. All right. This may be my final question. We'll see. Uh, give me some of your, your greatest challenges uh, in talking to some of our uh, U.S. based uh, nursing recruiters, nursing managers. I, I want you to voice that so those who hear it can kind of understand. Maybe we can help them to help themselves. My biggest challenge is skepticism. Um, uh, a lot of our um, partners or, or, or future clients, potential clients, you know, have been burned, so to speak, you know, uh, and, and, and they're frustrated because they cannot get their nurses here fast enough. And I've seen some of the uh, competitors out there. I'm talking with some of them. Some of them may be potential partners of mine coming up here in the near future. We just don't know. But the, the skepticism is a hard you know, my grandmother said, hard road to hoe. <laughs> right. it, it, it's a difficult hill to climb because, yes, we are new. We are startup, but we're not new recruiters. We're not new to the game and we're definitely not new to the international space. We're definitely not new to immigration. And so uh, our combined experience, you know, gives us the opportunity to maybe take a second look at your challenges and say, hey, we might have a different solution or try a different approach. And so uh, I want to tell um, our future or potential clients out there, don't give up. Let's talk about it. Let's put together a plan. Let's put together a strategy. And, you know, the, the worst thing that someone can tell me is no, <laughs> because I, I, I love a challenge. And I know um, uh, a lot of you uh, executive vice presidents of, of nursing and executive nurses and chief medical officers, I know that you're frustrated and I know that you run into brick walls and I know that it is a challenge and we, we all know that it's a challenge, but let's put together a strategy and let's think about your individual nurses as individuals because, you know, there's no one size fit all when it comes to getting your nurses over here. You know, and so let's let's just think about how we put together a workable strategy for each individual nurse to give them an opportunity to grow their career and give you the opportunity to grow your staff. We're in a business of changing lives. We're changing the lives of these nurses that are coming over and, and launching their career. We're changing the lives of the patients like my loved one that has just recently been discharged from the hospital. And we're changing the lives of their families and their peer staff members in the hospitals that are going to be relieved because there's more hands around to do the work. Wonderful. All right. I got this information up on the screen now about Omnicrute. I have the uh, phone number where you can contact Omnicrute. I also have the mailing address. Uh, in just a moment, I'm going to put up the, uh, the Omnicrute uh, website where if you go through that website, you definitely can make contact. Uh, here's what I want you to do for me, uh, Tim. What can a prospective client expect when they finally get in contact with you and or a member of your team? What does that process look like once the contact has been made? Yeah, well, they can expect a you know, speedy response from us. Uh, they can expect us to actually listen and hear what their problems are. And they can expect us to be a straight shooter with them and just tell them what the realities are. Um, and then expect some sort of creativity. Let's think about the problem. Let's think it through. And let's just not say no. Just like that nurse that I was telling you about earlier that said, hey, we can't get our nurse out of the Philippines. We've been trying for the last 18 months. Well, there's a problem, right? 
And you should have another conversation with your provider if it's taking 18 months, because I, I don't I don't understand why it's taking that long. And I would dig in. And, and, and I did offer to that nurse supervisor, hey, why don't you, you know, give me a call and, and we can talk about that one particular case and we can try to understand better what the problem is. And then we could give you another pool of nurses to choose from in addition to that nurse. All right. Well, there it is. I appreciate your time. And just before we leave, I want to make sure you have a moment to address the audience. That may have been something that uh, that maybe we forgot to, uh, to to add to the conversation. And I want you to be able to to, to uh, greet the audience in that way. I tell you, um, Omnicrude is is a is a great, great organization. We have been building infrastructure for the last 18 months. And I was talk, talking to my team earlier today and encouraging them and in, 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 in looking back and reflecting on all the hard work and everything that we've been putting into this organization. You know, I stand so proud of the hard work that we've done. And, and there are some team members that, uh, that may not have had recruiting experience that are working in the background to help build the organization. Um, but we are a team of, bona fide international professionals who worked all over the globe. I think, I think between us, I think we've worked in nine different countries, uh, lived, lived and worked in nine different countries. Um, and uh, we've all immigrated from somewhere and had that immigration experience. And so we know what we're asking our nurses. We understand what they're going to go through when they get here as they, as they travel and, and change their life. So when you engage with Omnicrude, you're going to get someone that's compassionate and passionate about the work that we do. Understand that there are challenges, but we have some sort of creative thought process of how we work through your problem to get your nurses on board. Their success is our success. Our success is your success. And we're looking forward to the journey together with you. All right. Well, Managing Director Timothy Armstrong of Omnicrew, I thank you for your time. And I certainly thank you for letting people know who you are, who Omnicrew is. And I have a feeling, I got a feeling that some folks are going to be contacting you very soon. I thank you for the work that you're doing, helping us to, to really meet the challenge of uh, the shortage of nursing in the United States of America. And I thank you for the work that you're doing and helping to change the lives of people in other countries uh, wanting to come here to learn, to grow, to work and to add to this wonderful nation. I thank you. And uh, thank you. I, I suspect that we're going to be talking again real soon. As a matter of fact, I want to get with you because I want to do something in the first quarter of 2023 with you. I want the people to understand the journey and the progress that you're making. All right. So we'll put something on the calendar. We, we should vlog it. We, we should vlog our journey so that we can share with you guys. Yes. I, if you do that, if you don't mind uh, sharing some video with me, I will uh, put it on um Carl's conversation. I'll develop a little, a little place for you. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys. You can reach out to me at Tim at Omnicrute.us and uh, I'll be happy to engage with you. Happy to set an appointment so that we can just talk through some of your pain points. I'm just looking forward to it. And Carl, thank you so much. You've been an absolute wonderful host and I pray God's blessings uh, upon uh, th this platform, uh, your, your viewers and the work that you're doing. You, you, you're doing the Lord's work. And so thank you so much. Thank you. Please make sure you go back uh, on YouTube and on uh, Facebook, also on, on my Twitter page, and you put in your contact information, exactly how you want them to contact you. Okay, put that in. I sure there. will. That'll be helpful. I sure will. Thank All right, y'all. Until next time, remember Carl's Conversations has some things planned for you before the end of this uh, calendar year and definitely for first and second quarter of next year. Remember, Carl's Conversations is the safe place to have a difficult conversation. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.